Having seen now the size of the book, I realize why there needs to be five of you. And we're going to talk a little bit uh, about this work uh, just to introduce the book. I think I'd just like to start with this concept of time. This is the 21st Knutepunkt. It's 20 years in calendar time since the first event. We've gone full circle and come back to Norway again and again, actually. Uh, so time is very important for this book. Uh, Martina, how, how did you think about time? Yeah, that's basically where we started. We wanted to both look at uh, the roots of where the Nordic community came from and look ahead to where we might go in the future. But we also wanted all the juicy design bits, what we're doing right now. So we decided to split the book in three sections, yesterday, today, and tomorrow, just to capture all of that. And uh, if we think about the types of content uh, that you have in the book, the, the sort of genre, so to speak, uh, or also like maybe the themes. What were, you, what were you looking for when you started looking for text? Simon? Uh, do, okay. We were primarily interested in how LARP is used to tell stories, and indeed how we tell stories in LARP. So that was the underlying theme for the call for paper and for the book. Mm -hmm. Simon, do you want to come in? Uh, yeah, no, uh, when we sent out the call for papers, uh, what we wanted was loads and loads and loads of anecdotes. Because uh, we had this idea that this, this will be the reminiscence of everything we've done so far. And 20 years is a long time, it's an entire generation, so what have all the people been doing before me, and before most of us, and then what will we leave behind? And I felt that was very important this time around. The, I mean, I, I keep returning to the science, but this, there is like there's an idea with having a lot of voices represented as well. So there's not. Would you say that there's agreement across the book in the voices represented? No, Ellie. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, um, no. Uh, well, <laughs> well, well. Uh, there are a lot of. of um, I love that the story perspective that there are so many angles on how to tell a story and what story means and stories means in, in LARPs. Um, uh, and um, I don't know, I didn't know, I didn't, I wasn't, I came in later in the process, so I wasn't part of the planning or, or the getting the text, but just reading all these different perspectives that are sometimes contradicting each other, but are all just really, really interesting uh, thoughts. Yeah. Um, I also, Part of what I like about the book is that, or any of the Knut books, is that they sort of foster debate. So this year we kind of wanted to get that in the book already from the start. Uh, so once, like we looked through the text that we'd gotten and asked some other people to comment on them already in the book just to show that there is not just one viewpoint, right? There are several views to each. Historically, uh, when the, when the Goethe book started, uh, I'm old enough to to say with some <laughs> with some shame that it's like we were LARPing writing books, like we were trying to write very serious books, and some of the early ones are incomprehensible. And if you ever pick one up, it's not you who are stupid; it was the people who wrote them and and edited them who who were sort of on another kind of trip uh, then. Uh, it seems from what I've seen of the book that, that you've actually made a big effort to make this possible to approach uh, for people who are quite new to this community. How did you do, work with that? Well, that was one of my main goals for this book. I wanted good, readable, short text that was easy to understand and fun to read. And I think we managed to get quite a few of those. And then we also have text on the completely other side of the perspectives, which are more, much more academic because people like that too. I assume all through the process it has to be with like 100 people involved or even more. How did you coordinate your work and how did you work with the contributors? Well, I mean, uh, I said yes to heading the committee even though I was pregnant at the time <laughs> <laughs> because I'm an idiot. Um, <laughs> and then we brought in the, someone who didn't even live in Norway. Um, so most of our work has been done online. Uh, and we've coordinated via Google Docs and Google Hangouts and just basically talk to each other over Facebook. And then we spent a really long time planning the book before we started working on it. Because we planned it right after she got pregnant and she managed to have the baby in between. So we have like at least nine months there. <laughs> I think, 
A lot of the, I mean, the best thing, of course, is to let people read. But do, do you have something that you want to send as, a, as a, something to keep at the back of your mind or, or some favorite page you want people to turn to or something like that? Yeah, yeah, go nuts. What do okay. you want people to think? Go. What do I want people to think? Oh, going in. Or anything you want to tell people right now about this book. I made a book. I'm a librarian. It's a, it's a, it's a career goal, okay? It's just... <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite gone off to me yet, but well, I, I want people to laugh at the excess. Uh, the moments that we have in the book, the character moments, they are really great, and there's just snippets of them. But spend some time looking at them. I promise they're worth it. Well, could you hold this one, please? Uh, I really want people to just flip through the book, just like Simon is doing now. <laughs> and then see, is there something that catches your eye? That uh, I want to stop and look at that or read that. It's a really beautiful book and it smells great. <laughs> um, I think it's an unfair question to pick out one piece. Yeah. They're all lovely. It's a book that will keep you going for a while. There's a lot to dip into. There's a lot of good, strong content in there. There's a lot of things that will make you angry and you'll disagree with. And I think that's fantastic. I think maybe um, pick. This year we have a few uh, British, like few more British LARPers who's writing, and some of them aren't even from the Nordic traditions. So there's some interesting new viewpoints, so maybe keep an eye out for that. Yeah, the combination of different uh, viewpoints uh, all together is amazing. But I want to say something about what you said of it being a thankless process, because I don't think it is. I, I love working with text, but working as an editor in a project like this is also working with people. And I just, everybody has been so uh, friendly and open and, and helpful and uh, fantastic in the process. And I think it's really important that the, to say that that's worked really, really well. On that note, I think we should do some cheers. Uh, first, I would ask the people who have contributed to this book in some fashion, could you just all wave? <laughs> Welcome and thank you all. <laughs> and we've had some beautiful Knutu books before, but I think this might actually be the prettiest of all time. Would you like to introduce the designers? and? Maybe you guys could just stand up and, and take a bow. Yeah. Where look, the look over there. <laughs> In the back. Yes. Victoria, Casey, and Owen did a wonderful job. So fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, we're going to do a little uh, audience participation thing, but in the meanwhile, you guys can go and find your seats. Thank you very much. Please give a big hand to the books editors. Yeah.